Hi everyone, welcome to the Pace Studio in New York City. Um, buenos dias, everyone. <laughs> Bienvenidos. Um, we are here with Ile today. Welcome. Um, you're going to play some songs for us, uh, but you've got a huge band. We are very lucky um, here with you today. So, do you want to start by introducing everyone? Uh, yeah, I'm here with the band from whoop, from Puerto Rico. <laughs> uh, Beto, Bayo, este, Nico, Joey, Boria, Ismael, Bote, and I think that's it. Um, Amazing. <laughs> um, so your album, uh, Ilevitable, uh, came out last year, won a Grammy, which is freaking awesome. And you're going to play uh, some songs from that record for us today. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. Well, tell us about the first one. Uh, the first one is called uh, Dolor. It's a song written by my grandmother in the in 1955. She wrote it. Uh, so it's the first time in this album her songs are being published. Uh, so I'm very excited because of that. So Dolor. Manitas tú, dolor. 
<laughs> thank you, thank you. That was so beautiful. Thank Mi corazón. You. <laughs> um, so you said that your grandmother uh, wrote that. Was she a musician as well? Uh, yeah, she she loved music. She sang very beautiful and played the guitar. She uh, uh, had a was be, como se dice beca uh, uh, scholarship. Scholarship. scholarship to study in a university uh, outside of Puerto Rico. She was very young, but her father didn't let her, unfortunately. So she was a uh, uh, domestic economia domestica. Uh, home ec. Home economics uh, teacher <laughs> in a school in Puerto Rico. Uh, so, um, but she kept writing songs and and singing, and I know I know she she taught us all that uh, to us, uh, our family, and and she taught me the importance of interpretation, and I value a lot uh, her uh, how he her she, she teach me. <laughs> totally, is she still uh, here with us? Has she heard the song? Uh, no, unfortunately, she didn't. Uh, when uh, this song was the first one that I recorded from the album, I I sang it with Cheo Feliciano. A uh, singer from Puerto Rico that also passed away in 2014, unfortunately. Uh, I recorded this song in 2012, uh, so it was very special. It was like a moment. The musical arrangement in the album was made by my uncle Joe Pujals, uh, and my grand grandmother's name is Flora Amelia de Gracia, and I, I feel so so happy. Uh, I. I feel very emotional every time I sing her songs. So even though she's not here uh, physically, I know she's here energetically somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's so it's so cool to me. Uh, you come from a very musical family. Um, you obviously um, got your start on a very large scale <laughs> in some ways uh, with Calle Trece. Mm -hmm. um, and this music, however, is very different from from that group. Um, what in particular drew you to this sound? Uh, it's something I've been listening to uh, my whole life, uh, thanks to my family. Uh, but I started like um, getting more passionate from this music that is my music as a Puerto Rican and as a Caribbean. Uh, so it moves me a lot every time I listen to old records and, and old voices, especially from Puerto Rico, that unfortunately uh, we don't know so much nowadays. Uh, and I, I was afraid that that part of our musical history was going to be forget it. Uh, mm -hmm. or abandoned in some way. So I, I felt, uh, even though I explore in, uh, with other uh, music in the album, uh, as a majority, I love uh, our Caribbean culture is very rich and, and has a lot of fusion in it. So uh, I value that a lot and I don't want it to be forget, is forget it. So I, that's one of the reasons. Well, let's hear more music then. Uh, tell us about the next song that you're going to play. Uh, this next song was uh, written by my sister, Milena Perez. Uh, she's an actress, and it's also the first time her songs are being published in this album. Uh, uh, my last single, um, and I love this song. It's very uh, passionate, and is uh, Triangulo.
Tell me a little bit more about where you find um, these these old recordings um, of of Puerto Rican and uh, Caribbean singers and artists. Um, do you go to record stores? Do you dig through vinyl? Do you go on YouTube? How did you find? You know, how did you find these these you know classic artists? And how do you continue to search? For, for others? Um, well, I, I love to search more music uh, that is new for me, even though it's, it has been uh, from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my, my dad had a lot of records at home. And uh, in Puerto Rico, uh, salsa is like, uh, there's a lot of salsa there. And, but I like to, to appreciate more of the sound of the interpretation of each singer and and see why it captures me or why I don't like it or why I like it and, and analyze it uh, a little in a more profound uh, way. Um, and also, I, my dad is a musician, so he, he always asks me, asks me questions like, who's singing now? Uh, why do you recognize his voice? Or something like that. Uh, and I grew up with that. My grandmother loved uh, a lot of singers, Gilberto Monroy from Puerto Rico. And also Cheo, we are a fan of Cheo. Um, and uh, it's like a, you, you almost melt yourself when you listen to, to them uh, because they're like talking to you while they're singing. Uh, so I appreciate that a lot. Uh, for me, that is the most important thing to transmit the feeling even though uh, you hear it through something so distant as a speaker. Uh, but to feel it near you is very important. So I grew up listening to that. I also love uh, searching uh, through the internet. I have my own collection mixed with other collections that my dad gave me a, a lot of uh, albums. Well, albums that he had, my grandmother, I have a few and I've also bought a lot uh, over the years, but I also love to keep searching more, and I love that about YouTube and the internet, that you listen to something and then they recommend you more, and you you can stop. I love that, and I, I, I've, know, I've known a lot of uh, new voices uh, thanks to that. It's easy to, to get started doing that, and then like six hours will pass and you're still listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, why do you think it's important um, these days in particular after the hurricane that hit Puerto Rico and the Caribbean and South Florida um, and in this political climate, uh, why do you think it's important uh, that Puerto Rican voices are heard and represented right now? Uh, because we are a colony <laughs> and we've been spoken like people are speaking for us and they're not letting maybe we to speak for ourselves. And that could be like in a general uh, way of speaking. Uh, we, we need to uh, express our own identity. And I think that is happening little by little, but it's tough uh, because uh, we're, we have been very submissive to our reality. Uh, so it's hard work, it's very psychological. Um, but I think I always recommend art as a tool for speaking out or writing or doing music, composing or making a, a something, a painting or anything. Uh, a way of expression helps us a lot to go through life uh, complexities and manage it in, in the best way possible. So I, I think uh, it, it is very important um, to to believe more in ourselves as Puerto Rican, that, that we are capable of, of working uh, on our own and making Puerto Rico uh, uh, the best the best way possible, uh, fixing uh, things on our own. So um, I love uh, to work that out uh, with, with my people, with my family, uh, with Puerto Ricans, and also through art, expressing that uh, as a family. <laughs> totally. Uh, you've got one more song for us today. Uh, yeah. Tell us about the last one. 
This one is also written by my sister Milena uh, Perez. Uh, she wrote it while I was uh, making the album, so it was nice to hear her. Oh, I had this song that came to me, uh, and I loved it since the beginning. Uh, she used a reference from a, a story of a feminist from the 1800s that her name was Charlotte Perkins Gilman. The story is The Yellow Wallpaper. Uh, so she makes a lot of references from from that uh, in the song that it, it came from a subtle caress that made her uh, transport her to this she associated with this story so it's it's nice this album is very feminine and it's something that I that I enjoy a lot so this song is called Extraña de Querer Me cruzaste de la mano y me nacieron dos antenas Y mientras fotografiaban sin que nadie nos viera Se posaron tus deditos como rana en mi espalda No sabía si moverme, si dejarme a Acariciar. Me hacen falta las caricias en estas horas de mar Y un brazo invisible me salió de la pared De la piel de mi espalda que está extraña de querer Se me estiraban los brazos y de allí desde esa piel me salía Estaban alrededor de ti Y fue justo cuando con dolor Lo decidí Que no podía continuar En tan escueta canción Que tus brazos y los míos Hacían una ovación De cariños que no pueden Por favor, hazme el amor Dame toda la energía Que necesito un favor Para recuperar algo De lo que se echó a perder Y vivir ya paso a paso Con mi cría y su querer Fuerzas para entender Que no necesito mucho más que a mí Me escribí a Perkins Sutilmente en su tapiz Y trepé por las paredes Llegué al techo, te perdí Se me amarillo de pronto Cierto trozo de nariz Cuando miré hacia mi arriba Te vi abajo a mis pies Y en la tez se me veía el Amarillo de tu piel Ahí que decidí, manos déjenlo salir Y dejar que el aire cubra este mítico jardín Se llenó de aire el bar, luego casi no te vi Y ya cuando regresaste, ya todo resuelve en insecto como Kafka en frenesí
Mm-hmm. Amazing. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Um, you'll be at the Mercury Lounge uh, here in New York City tomorrow night. Um, one more date in between, and then you're going to my place, uh, oh. Miami. You're playing the North Beach band shell um, oh, yeah. on Thursday, and um, many other dates um, in Texas and California uh, for the rest of the calendar year. Cool. <laughs> um, just some extra percussion <laughs> to punctuate those points. Um, uh, Ile Vitable is mm-hmm. out now. Um, gracias a Ile, gracias el grupo. Um, thank you so much for gracias being here with us today. Un placer. Un placer.